Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Close. I'm your host, Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be chatting everything post rotation. This is episode 535. Hattie Hattie, let's get rowdy. Do you really want to do you really want to click set? Leadership. Roll a six, make a move extreme. Token up. Take an action from your team. I go straight to your start. Hypersonic speed. Roll a five. Getting brave, hitting blades, cross fangs. Hey yo. Stick and move, click a few just to hit a stop. Need a three CCE on a flurry close. Tear your dials apart. Once the timer starts. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Jordan, like always, in the studio is Ian Eggleston. What's going on, Ian? Oh, it is going. I'm having a great time, honestly. It's, you know, again, usually after Worlds, it slows down a bit, but this year it's been everything but that. Oh my gosh, it's been Hero Clicks, Hero Clicks, and some more Hero Clicks, which... Can you ask for anything more? No. No, you certainly cannot. You can I mean, ask for more hero clicks. I ooh. Did you think of that? I didn't think of that, but you know what? I honestly I wouldn't mind asking for more hero clicks. Mm-hmm. I could use you know what's crazy about coming back from worlds, and we actually played the most games of hero clicks this year at Worlds than we ever have Two. in past years. Two whole games of hero clicks we played. And they were both fantastic. And oh, they were so much fun. Yeah. I mean, quality of the people. As quality a reminder, get stunted on Asael. Crit, crit you out of the game, turn one. Don't come around here, no mo. Get stunned on, Miles Kane. Didn't really crit him out of the game, just played better. Just I yeah. think just built a better team. What can we say? Oh, so we won? We yeah, won we both team. won, yeah. Nice. All yep. right. So our team, our team Oh, so we won. just steamrolled, okay. Yeah. 3-0. and Pretty much. Easy. Yeah, easy dub, easy dub. But yeah, and then also coming back home and just like, I've never had the itch more so to play Hero Clicks than after this world, which is crazy because again, like I said, we played the most amount of games of Hero Clicks we ever did at Worlds. That is true. And I was just like itching, like I have to play Sunday, <laughs> I have to have to play but uh, yeah. my itch has been different for sure. Yeah. Where it sucks because I want to tell you guys all about these things, but right now it's just a bit under wraps. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes with both Dial H, the IPF, and possibly some other stuff too. Ooh. Really cool stuff. And uh, a lot of it right now is just planning that out. And within you know the coming months, I mean, it's just so exciting. So my itch has very much just been like really improving what we deliver to you guys and i'm just i'm so excited for you guys to see it it's gonna be so much fun absolutely yeah absolutely well ian what made you happy this week uh about two hours ago i just purchased a full set of the oh. supernova zombies uh the original chases which you know calder and i have both really really talked them. about you I know growing them, yeah. up watching that same youtube video of those guys who bought like three <sighs> cases yeah. and didn't pull them uh, watching that over and over back when there was zero hero clicks content, so it's like, all right, play the hits, play the favorites. I mean, I've opened a ridiculous amount of Supernova, and technically in those boosters there was a zombie, uh, you know, <laughs> which which works out Ooh. pretty well. But, and who owns that? Right but also, now? I uh, a guy named uh, technically me, Fridge Luke. But yeah, technically you. I guess. <laughs> yeah, technically you, you own it. And it was Colonel America. It too. was Colonel America. Just icing on the cake. Honestly, it's kind of beautiful. I just I have a great relationship with those zombie chases because I've had the first ever time I got a Colonel America was gifted to me by somebody. Mm-hmm. It was a really touching moment, and then I was able to like trade all the way back in 2021 i traded the fulcum of ominous for all four just zombies. unreal an insane an insane deal young finesse just crazy <laughs> just crazy so he then, offered it to you though i know yeah that's the crazy thing is i was like yeah sure i'll just say i want the four zombies because i also the way i got spider-man was by buying this huge bulk lot of hero clicks from the store that was selling all of their old hero clicks and i got that for like a hundred dollars and i made like like I that, remember that. Yeah. yeah, it was like a month of my life where I was just selling all of this the worst way possible. I sold it to Troll and Toad and Cool Stuff Inc. And I still made a thousand dollars profit off of all the hero clicks like wow. that I bought from that while while keeping that zombie Spider Man and a few other things that I wanted. Well, to Okay, do, Mr. Rockefeller. Was, it was. I mean, it was the, it was the most insane deal ever, and it'll literally never happen again. Buying yeah. a collection for a hundred dollars with that much stuff just because well, I don't know. Like, I mean, you know, a while back, get rid of it. Dan Powell bought that two hundred dollar collection. And he got like sixteen Thanoses in it or something ridiculous yeah like that was that. insane 
But yeah, this, the relationship I have with zombies is a little little more tainted because I pulled one in my brick when I was like 10 or 11. Oh, really? And then it was stolen from me. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I don't know if I that's shared right. this no, story. That's right. No, you told me that story. But I know yeah, that. Show it on the show. Pulling it, though, like... For whatever reason, I like stopped opening this booster, and this is back when figures were packaged individually, so you'd open them from the top, and you know they'd be in their little plastic holders. And so I was going through the packs, and I was like emptying to get the battlefield cards or the feet cards out or whatever the bystanders. And I was like, oh, there's still some figures in here. Top was like a nightshade, which whatever. The next figure was Corvax, so I'm already losing my mind. I was like, I had another such a beautiful figure. Where he's gonna, like, so cool. Yeah. And then the bottom figure was Spider Man. I just like freaked out. I was like running around the house. Yeah, so it's good to have them back. Well, Spider Man back in the collection. That's the only one I ever They're owned. Such a... But now to have them as a collector is well, is good. And I remember for years and years and years, I had a Hulk like Supernova two twenty three Hulk eBay watch list for forever, and it was never was so never hard, less man. than you know hundred to ninety bucks. And I was like, oh, I just can't do that. I just can't do that for one figure. And so yeah, getting that great trade was insane. So I mean, I'd these say are value just... on it right now. Like as a set, is probably closer to four hundred. So to get that slashed in half that for two hundred, selling it for two hundred, yeah, incredible. Honestly, when I saw that post, I was like, oh, this has to be gone. And yeah. so like, I didn't even think about show- sending it to you or whatever. And then you like text me, you're like, yeah, I just got the zombies. And I was like, oh, I was for sure. I that saw had that been sold. at work. I was like, all right, I'm gonna drop what I, i'm doing here i can't believe i cannot yeah. believe that sat for like as long as it did and didn't get sold because i don't know they're just such a beautiful part of hero clicks history mm-hmm. like the first like real chase set oh yeah didn't well know they quite existed. literally the first chases yeah no so, uh, they are no there are some people that would argue that there's chase rarity figures from an old dc set like alfred or whatever I don't, and that's I don't after know. supernova oh is it oh yeah. okay supernova is quite literally the first chase set Isaac, anyone who disagrees why with that you, why would you lead me astray Isaac? that's incorrect that is incorrect oh it actually oh, wow. Or no, it's not. No, Supernova it's not. came out. That was the last pre-carded oh, okay. set. Yeah, it was. So never mind, Isaac. You're correct. You're well, not listening to this, but okay, he's definitely not. It's hundred percent off. <laughs> oh man. Oh but yeah. In addition to that, so that was awesome. That was a great deal. Uh, the other thing was my brother played old Patrick Bateman. Patrick Bateman in American Psycho. Uh, musical theater production, and I went and saw that. So did Calder. I did. That is also kind of part of what made me happy this week. But it was, it was cool. It was a fun show. Jeff did a great job. I really enjoyed it. The the prop master in me, the prop maker in me, wasn't in love with some of the props. No, but because there know, wasn't any props. There was <laughs> yeah. not really anywhere. Yeah, but it was still really, like a really fun show. I loved the costuming. There were so many good songs. You know, mm-hmm. for like local like Omaha theater, or, like not even Omaha. Like, yeah, Bellevue, they had LeBron James show up you know, to the pickup game, basically, and a lot of people yeah. didn't even realize it. Had no clue. They and that's no me referencing my brother for yeah, of course. people who are missing. No, me. Jeff. I mean, <laughs> if had there not been such a good Patrick Bateman, like. He's on stage for 90% of the show. You know, it is American Psycho, so you need to have, like, in most plays, it's true. You have to have a strong lead. But in not every play is the lead there 90% of the time. Like, they're there a lot of the time, but, like, this is, like, he's, like, almost constantly. There's usually some side arc. Yeah, there's, there's, like, the B story, right? And there's there's no B story. It's just all, like, Patrick Bateman. It's it's the B story of Bateman, baby. Yeah, that's right. I went and saw the play uh, with my sister, and we just had a great time hanging out. She got here a little early, so we were able to go get Buffalo Wild Wings. I love just Ooh. smashing wings, oh, yeah, hanging dude. out, chatting. We went to Walmart to like pick up some stuff, and I bought these really cool – I already showed them to you – but these Metal Universe Marvel cards – that are just so beautiful. A pack of them is like 30 bucks for this little mini case. But you open it up and they're just these really beautiful, shiny, collectible cards that have like some really cool character selection from like old 1930s comic art to modern art to like their pseudo MCU look to certain storylines. It's just really cool. And then you can apparently get some special like Avengers Assemble, whatever cards, but we didn't have any such luck. Like, you know, you open these and it's mm-hmm. not like hero clicks where you know, like, oh, yep, that's a chase. That's a whatever. When you open these card packs that you're never used to opening, you're like, I have no idea what any of this is potentially worth. Yeah. I guess I could figure it out. But that was a ton of fun. And then, of course, playing hero clicks on Sunday, I got to play for the first time Funhouse Joker, the DC 23 LE Joker. And we were playing Silver Age. No, we were playing Golden Age. So I could use the Pool of Lava with him. And oh my gosh, that is so much fun. I am so bummed that I never played that piece with the Pool of Lava while it was modern. Because oh my, it's hilariously fun. And even with like the big round platform elevated being to go, okay, I'm under your entire team. And the fact okay, that it's not under your team. You all take you're a damage, a fall it, damage. You can spin it out so far. Ooh, yeah, exactly. Because it's three yeah. by three. Yeah, yeah. So you can move it three squares up. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Insane. So... 
Funhouse Joker. If you own one, he's only like 20, 30 bucks. He's like not expensive. Yeah, great value SLE. pickup, Mr. Joker. And he is just so much fun. The fact that he can be six squares away from the terrain and then he can poison through it, he can force blast through it, he can outwit through it. So get him just kind of close. I played him with Kite Man, hell yeah. And so he was keeping him super safe because he already has Mastermind, I guess. But if for some reason anything happened or he got further away from Kite Man or I put him out or whatever, he could always Mastermind a Kite Man. So I played a Gotham City team, also got to use Clock King, and the clock was right twice a day. I crit missed on a hit with Clock King. And I was like, that's actually uh, a critical hit. So had just a blast playing Hero Clicks on Sunday in this really goofy Gotham City Oh, yeah, the City clock's Underworld. broken yeah. on your head. Oh, <laughs> smash. So yeah, it was just a great week. Great it's week like that clicks. scene in SpongeBob where Squidward has the oh, uh, the closet the closet full of clocks, alarm clocks, and yeah. SpongeBob's just smashing them over and over. Basically, that's what playing King. Clock King that's is like does. every time. Yeah, it's hilarious. Squidward's got that ace in his sleeve, baby. <laughs> Can't stop him. Uh, but all yeah. right, shall we? I think that's about everything. Let's well, I mean. Oh. Again, everything I can say right I now. Say. Ooh, there's Ooh. so much more exciting stuff. Ooh. But not today. Nope. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, guys, we just really wanted to do a big discussion on rotation. Before we get into post rotation, let's talk about what has rotated in and like what we're yeah. missing, oh, what we're so sad or sad to lose. I'm going to get some hate on this okay. one, I think. Okay. I know I am. Because the number one thing I'm going to miss, and it's it's like not debatable, because I think it it might be my favorite chase set of all time. Oh, I really am going to miss the Masters of Evil. I understand why they need to go. I understand why they did go, yeah. but I can't help but love them. I mean, Ghost Goblin is just so cool, so much fun to put on the board. Iron Inquisitor, King Killmonger. I'm sure you guys are sick of him. I get it. But man, like Dark Phoenix seeing the brute uh, keyword and just going straight to the lab. Oh my gosh. Kid Thanos, just free ping damage. He's also a taxi. Infinitely flexible. And they are all so cool looking. So, uh, I mean. They are really sick looking. I think they're probably going to get the ban hammer in silver for a while too. Which, oh, really? You know, I think so. Okay. They probably deserve it. I won't lie. They deserve it. Like, as a Silver Age element, yeah, why isn't 50 points of my team that? Honestly, yep. yeah. It uh, it's totally fair. It's totally justified. But that don't mean I'm not pouring one out for him. It's I'll totally miss them. big justified. And then I think my my second miss is from the same set. The super rare Spider Man who oh. hands out wild card. Again, just such a fun piece to revisit and build and strategize with. You know, doing stuff like giving the camo shark bystander Green Lantern team ability and having him carry eight across sixteen squares. That's the best. And then all this, like so many shenanigans, getting triple shield, triple PD, you name it. Everyone has Suicide Squad now. All your constructs have Suicide Squad. Yeah. There's so many cool things you can do with that, and he enabled so many things. So I would love to see that mechanic revisited in the future. Uh, I don't know, third pick for retirement that I'm sad to see go? It's a little tough, and this is another, I think, probably I like controversial big, one. I feel like there's a really big one you're, you might be missing, depending on what you're about to say. Oh, Green Lantern Batman. Oh, okay. You is were close. I was thinking just all constructs. That's like my oh, number one. You sure. know, my number one that I'm missing is like just all constructs, all the rings, everything. But of course, you know, hold on to your rings, all yeah, that. Hold so on to your rings. I'm obviously never going to get rid of my constructs. I love my constructs. No. You know, I think you'd, I don't you'd get be rid a of fool. anything. You'd be a fool to get rid of these rings and constructs, especially with the, the hold on to your rings announcement. But I'm going to miss that. Like, I instantly, like, you know, built a team and I was like, I can't really, I can't give anybody a ring. I can't, uh, it shoots. This post rotation <laughs> building, it does feel like, in a very good way, a very Looking positive at, way, barren. Like, a team I'm working on, which hopefully we may have a video for you guys. I think it's really funny. We'll have probably a video of this team, like, later and some gameplay with it. But, like, working on this team, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm spending so much points in support. Before I don't have was, just plus 10 stats yeah, for 50 points. points. Yeah, for 50 points being like, yep, that's all the support wow. I need. That's all the TK and perplexes and probs yeah. and everything. And it's like, nope, need to invest a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. I am very happy. Just it more good. creative team building, a team that just feels better, you know, without the porters. I don't know. Just It's it's less lazy to build a team. You have to, you have to work a little bit. Every keyword kind of matters a little bit more now. So now oh, you're like, so oh, much man. More. But that's why I really want to invest in non-theme. I don't know yeah. if it's correct. That's fair. But I want to break my, you know, like seriously, how long have you been building theme? Even in non-theme eras, I'm like, oh, I'm still going to go maybe for theme. 
Oh, a lot of the time. It's kind of intrinsic where it's like, oh, I get a bonus for playing theme, even mm-hmm. like back when Limits it used to... Limits your decisions, too, so it's easier. It does limit your decisions. So it so, makes, like, team building... That. Once you kind of have parameters for team building, it feels mm-hmm. easier versus, like, okay, here's everything, yeah. you know? But okay, here's everything is more... You uh, can have whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can have anything you want. What about figures you're happy to see go, Calder? Or do you still... Oh, well, I want to that... sh- shout out, yeah, a oh, handful sorry. more figures. Like, honestly, it's like all of BTU. Pretty much all of BTU. I love building from BTU. It's like one... It was my favorite mm-hmm. set in Modern, so... Heavily, heavily missing. Mostly the constructs from BTU. And then from Avengers Forever, I'm really Oh my gonna, gosh, Arachnite. Oh, yeah, Arachnite. Oh my gosh. How did no, I forget? No shout out to Arachnite is, is kind of actually insane that is brutal. On, on your point. Um, but I'm going to miss Soldier Supreme. I didn't play him a ton, but like uh, Andrea really made me want to play Soldier Supreme mm. more. Like I kind of fell out of love nah, with Soldier Supreme. And now I'm like back into, ah, oh, man. You don't want to play Winter Hulk? No, don't even mention. One I knew, see, I knew, I knew you, you were going to mention Winter Hulk. I hate uh, <laughs> I can't believe I pulled that figure so many times. It <laughs> That's really funny. Actually, just hurt me so much. Um, and then, of course, Absorb Man Prime. You know, oh, I played sure, him a yeah. lot, but I, I am going to miss Absorb Man Prime. He's really cool. Prime Captain America was really cool. The Avengers, a lot of the Prime like, Hulk legacy even. cards. Prime Hulk. Yeah. Miss Marvel, too. It wasn't being on Prime. I never, you know, it's funny is I bought her and then I still never played a team with her. I, like, Post I Worlds last year, them. seeing like Nicholas Madsen and I think Mike Askew both played last year at Worlds. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the, the Miss Marvel drop bending off. team. Yeah, and then I still just never played her. I bought like two, and then she sat, and I never played her. We're losing a lot of cool legacy cards. I love almost all of Avengers 60th legacy cards Ooh, and BTU. a lot of the Avengers Forever legacy cards, the BTU legacy cards. A lot of those like are really sad. This is a smaller rotation, but it hits so hard because now it, it feels does. like we have so little in modern. It's kind of crazy, you know? It's just kind of just kind of wild but that's pretty much for the most part a lot of legacy cards just the lanterns all of btu as a whole such an amazing set well, sad to see it go on three the thing you're happiest oh, yeah. to see go one two three tarot, tarot cards. cards see ya <laughs> get out of here be gone mm-hmm. from me be gone yeah. from you vile creatures oh. later goodbye go good riddance never want to see you again unless you come with madam xanadu then really it's fine because it, it feels like a costed element honestly i'm gonna play madam xanadu i'm probably still not gonna play tarot cards with her i won't either yeah i'm probably not but I, I do love her that much though mm-hmm. and i don't even oh, think that figure to. rocks yeah she's so good i mean but yes i'm so happy they're gone oof. they were just a non-costed game element that everybody got for free that could swing games so heavily it's rewatching the so still working on the master's cut as of uh, recording here but rewatching this game so much of that game i'm not gonna say like oh dylan only won because of his tarot cards oh dang bro but so impactful clip that like insane yeah clip that <laughs> chat oh god live on viewership the, on the, yeah <laughs> on the recorded podcast really though like drawing the fool and saying okay Nick, oh, it is. you huge. do not get to use trick arrows is like well, that severely limits my the star, alpha. Dude, every time I see followed a game by with the, the star card that lets you teleport six with stealth, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, now his whole team can just jump wherever it needs to on Wakanda. I loved that comment on the video where it's Whoa. like, how was Kong able to move three times in a turn? And it's like, oh, he had the tarot card uh, <laughs> that yeah. let him just teleport yeah. or whatever. So, and then, you know, I've had some just really like this feels horrible moments with tarot, like. In like a top Swiss match, just having like somebody draw the perfect tarot deck, it's yeah. I just, oh gosh, I've never walked away from a game just like, I feel like I had no chance in that. Yeah. So, you know, for those of you who enjoyed tarot, you you had plenty of time too, okay? Yeah, you you actually a long time. Three and if there's worlds. one thing I want to Three catch a ban in silver, oh, I know please. what it is. Well, they don't need to be banned because now they're only oh, characters that's right, that's right. that's right. printed tarot They don't cards. need to. So, so they, they actually do have a fundamental cost now. So you have to only play the two characters, I think, in silver, or three characters that have the tarot Saturnine, keyboard. Saturnine Tarot. That's who it is. Yeah, okay. So yeah, Saturnine, Saturnine Tarot, and then you have to play Madame Xanadu Prime. So now that there's an inherent cost, you have to yeah, play take this that figure back. on the team. It's totally, it's honestly totally fine. But fundamentally, again, having something for free that can swing the game so insanely is just great. It doesn't take up sideline spot. Doesn't it score can any also points. Screw you over too. But also like to true. me, that is just that's just not a fair cost no. because you stacked your deck to favor you. Yeah, I did the same, but still, it's just like okay, what did you draw? Like leaving so much of an advantage to chance. I just, I don't love it. You guys know our feelings on it. We don't need to harp on it anymore. What other things are you happy to see go? I can think of one. Oh, I mean, 
I'm stoked. Like Prime Spider Man and Carnage. Yeah, I was gonna say gone. the subconscious I'm, wall crawling. Yeah, I'm black so happy bruising. that that dude is gone. <laughs> I, I, you know, everybody knows my hate, not even love hate, just hate hate relationship with Prime <laughs> Spider Man. You know, you did admit I, he was fun though. I did admit I did finally play one game with him. I copied Isaac's team, and I was like, wow, this <laughs> figure, so fun. this figure. Had it been probably any other character, I would have actually enjoyed playing this this figure a lot. Like mm-hmm. genuinely, like, but can't some do other it. Just honorable can't do mentions it. of things that I'm just kind of happy to see go. Not necessarily because like, oh, I had such a bad experience, but because you know, just let's let's get some fresh stuff in. Yeah, Genesis, Apoc, mm. see ya. Very happy. To see Goodbye. Those That's okay that you're gone. Legacy Apoc, your reign at Worlds is <laughs> it's over. over. That one's more so. I'm not like hating. That's, that's actually, kind of funny. but that's just such a fun like narrative that yeah. happens at Worlds oh, yeah. that I actually do enjoy. But yeah, goodbye. You're, you're, goodbye. <laughs> you can be Carnage gone now. Silver Surfer, rot. See you. Go away. <laughs> be gone from my presence. You're nasty. Get out of here. I dislike you heavily, Carnage Silver Surfer. Oh my gosh. Take a shower. <laughs> Rest Ugh. in peace, Scrappy Doo. Mm. You know. As I was, again, building teams today, working on 300 Modern stuff, our sideline is so limited right now. We have mm-hmm. just nothing for These sideline. Do we have like four or five figures for sideline right now. It's kind of crazy. But yeah, so Scrappy-Doo, War Machine to a lesser extent. But yeah, I kind of mm-hmm. will miss Scrappy-Doo. I'm also bummed. I actually never got to play the um, the BTU chases as a team yet. I need to, still need to do that. I think it's still do that silver or whatever. But like, I never got around to doing that. I'm going to kind of miss it a little bit, you know? I am a little sad to see a lot of the equipment from Spider-Man Beyond Amazing go. Yeah. We are also, like, right now, before Collector's Trove comes out, we are very limited on equipment. We have, like, the motorcycles, <laughs> the sword, and then Bucky's, Bucky's arm. arm. Like, that's, like, it. Like, we don't have a ton of equipment right now, so that's a little tough. So I'm sad to see a lot of, like, the fun equipment, shot gauntlets, things like that, like, go away from, like, Beyond Amazing. True. But... You know, it's so weird. It was such a small rotation, yet such an impactful one. Well, the biggest thing that comes from this rotation, in my opinion, I think with the design we've seen kind of post this rotation, is that figures have like more inherent weakness. Like there were so many things that rotated that were so strong defensively and also and just strong pumped out I agree. absurd damage. Like CSF or Carnage Silver Surfer Gs, look at me using abbreviations. Get a load of this guy. That guy, way too long of a dial, way too much damage. Genesis Apoc, wow, I hate killing these things. Just so many figures that, you know, we could go into a million examples of that, but like, mm, some some frustrating things. I agree. There does need to be more like classic give and take of just, mm-hmm. wow, I'm very like insanely effective cheap attacker. I shouldn't also be just like a defensive powerhouse. Yeah. You know, I love the designs and like things like Major Logan where it's like, oh, he's very effective. Oh, we can just kill him. Like, he, so did, he can die. Yeah. You know, there's like just a handful of figures like that where it's just like, there's no, very there's few more. pieces there's left more right now, now, which is nice that are hard to remove yeah. from the map. I mean, obviously the one that I'm drawn to is Legacy Daredevil, of course. But there really aren't many figures that are like mimicking even, uh, the sustain that we saw you know, in this Even previous like Super Rare Ghost Rare Rider. Thing. For the most yeah. part, you can still kind of take him out, you know, mm-hmm. if you just plan it, you know, like he's throw not, elevated like, under him, insane. Kill what's hard. around him. Yeah. He didn't lose like anything though. He still has no, access to a, a lot, lot of his a lot toys. Of his good stuff is Wheels of Vengeance and up. So. It's crazy, man, too. Just a quick note on like worlds. You know, I was so high on Alex Mater's build. And I was looking through the build sheets. Almost nobody played that. I think so many people weird. were like stuck on like, oh, this is what people are practicing against because it was talked about a lot. Alex won a lot of stuff like yeah. playing that top three at nationals. So I think a lot of people got scared off and it was like psychology that kind of went against itself where it's like, well, I don't want to play this because people know how to beat it. I think if somebody played that team, it would have done really yeah. well. I'll yeah. stand by that. So I don't know if I was at Worlds, that probably would have been uh. what I played. Anyway, uh, this rotation really is awesome. Masters of Time coming into play is so, so cool. And honestly, there yeah, there's things I miss, but I think this rotation feels better than last rotation. Oh, this feels so much better. Oh, yeah, this feels great. So much better. This, you know, and again, it is harsh, right? People people can discuss as much as they want, and we've kind of mentioned it before, where it's like, yeah, losing a sixty does feel a little harsh. You know, it didn't have a mm-hmm. ton of time, you know, and it feels for bad the greater good for a lot of summer sets. But yeah, if it's honestly, it is for the greater good. I'm very excited. No Mephisto, no MOE. All of that stuff is gone. <laughs> yeah, just so much in that set mm-hmm. was just problematic. 
And now that we get into this new era where it feels like keywords matter more as far as support goes, support matters more. Yeah. Like, it's limited. Support is cost. I mean, yeah, okay, again, like, see you, Scott Porter. Yeah, see you, Scott Porter. Like, that's really, that is truly He's, the best part of the rotation. He was such a, like, I mean, it's crazy that we went this long without even saying that. Yeah. That's how embedded into the game he was, where it's like, it's not even worth mentioning. Yeah. Because, duh. Yeah. Making the decision to retire him this early. Genius. Like, thank you, WizKids. Get him that out of is, here. Yeah, seriously. The best thing yeah. you could have done to, uh, I think, bring in more to your game. Make the game healthy? Yeah, mm-hmm. 100%. So, while they were fun, they were enjoyable at times. Yeah. I think you could play them in wacky ways. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the time, they were not. They were just, you know, modern is 275 or 250 strong. points. Yeah, uh, yeah good, good riddance, but also, like, it was later. a fun idea, fun experiment. It was neat. Mm-hmm. It was neat. But yeah, now support has a cost again, except for one... Der Pegaton. I do think, yes, yeah, so there has been some discourse <laughs> online where a lot of people are saying, like, the go to support, like the new 50 point support, is like Space Ghost per Degaton. How do you feel about that? I think there is a few other options. And, you know, if you're in the route of building, like, specific keywords, this would be like non theme. Madison, I think, is also in that Ooh. category. Double Perplex, Mystical is still insane. There's a few others, too. I'm trying blanks. But I saw if you mentioned, I mean, Space Ghost, if you're going theme, he's a bit limited. I was looking at his keywords, and personally, you know, I, I obviously have my build patterns. I wasn't thrilled with, like, the selection of characters. They just weren't really my style. But Space Ghost is, yeah, he's incredible. He's, it's, it's, that just shows you how good Scott Porter is. Yeah. Is that Space Ghost has been largely unplayed. Yeah, not played at all. <laughs> this guy has, like, 15 five powers on his opening And, play. yeah, has a stupid amount of powers. And he it's can so hit funny. like a truck, so... There's definitely some new staples coming in. I've just enjoyed building in modern so much more mm-hmm. right now versus like a few <laughs> weeks ago. It's just been so much more fun when it's like more limited again. And like, you don't know as much. There's not builds posted no. right now. There's well, not yeah, tournaments there's nothing, going on. It's all just you don't have any air. outside influence. There's nothing. Yeah, you're just building like what you think might work. And with Which masters of time, there's so many things that just might insane work. Insane amount of stuff that might work. Another uh, honorable mention for like post rotation, somebody who's largely been slept on that might just wake up. I don't know with how prominent Murn and Kale okay. might be. Jokester. Jokester. Oh man, he was so much fun. I played him I played him Sunday also on that Gotham City Underworld team. Holy smokes, is Jokester just like He's legit. He's so under like people like never touch him again because he was fifty points and mm-hmm. he does what two Scott Porters do, but like you know he's the same point as two Scott Porters and just no one ever played him. But Jokester is Punishing actually so Rob, legit. Oh my gosh, triple he's perplex. so legit. In a, if Cur- it, uh, if Mern and Kale dominate this era, which there's possibility for that. Again, like I think Mern is is better now because the things that dealt with him, I think yeah. there's less of that in the meta right now. I could be way off on that, but if those things are more prominent. Then maybe not, but Jokester is something that I'm revisiting because that was a figure like when it was released. I was like, I really like this piece, and yeah. then uh, I was harassed. <laughs> you were, I mean, a little bit. I mean, I didn't see him at the time. Yeah. Honestly, just trying to build with Gotham City Underworlds made me realize how little I played of Notorious. I've like built mm. with almost none of Notorious, literally besides like Kamo. I have not played much from Notorious at all, and just messing around with like Gotham City Underworld or things like yeah, ooh, Jokester's a celebrity. Ooh, yeah, no, celebrity's got some bangers, um, and we'll, we'll get into that in a bit. It's here. just been fun to like revisit Notorious and being like, wow, I never gave this set much of a chance in the past. It just kind of happened. I was like, yeah, a bunch of DC stuff, whatever. And now I'm like, wow, this set is actually so much fun. Notorious mm-hmm. is like such a great set. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But yeah. Camo, uh, the super rare two face penguin. Penguin, I think, is another figure that gained some stock post rotation. A 40 point leadership with wild card who can hand out poison, can do smoke cloud, energy explosion, knockback, blades, precision strike. Like all of these things are so useful. And when you're in an era where you have less equipment, I think that handing out powers becomes inherently more mm, viable. That's fair. But in addition, it's like this guy can just dish some damage himself. And one of my favorite combos is carrying him adjacent to somebody, giving them poison, and then they poison. Mm, just that's a lot of fun. Uh, one keyword I do have a question about to kind of move into the next segment mm. of what keywords are we looking at? One keyword I think is questionable, but I think still has legs to stand on is detective. I know we're losing a Interesting. lot Interesting. Of- Every single uh, mystery card is gone, mm-hmm. Ian. Freaking uh, World's Finest is gone. Bat Prime Batman is gone. There's, I think, There's, still potentially something there. You can still, still go Hawkeye, Hawkeye. Oh, I which, guess, yeah. 
you know, talking with some players, they were like, yeah, Hawkeye Hawkeye was largely like underrepresented at Worlds. Like, well, he's a glass can. It's like, well, people are playing, um, people are playing Phoenix Sentinel for similar reasons. And so I don't know what's all there, but I'm curious about that keyword. I know the like the baby Groot shifting focus is something that's I, I largely just, underlooked. I just like looked at that because I just a lot of whatever looked up Detective, and I was like, man, people are not playing baby Groot shifting focus, and Placing it makes no eight? sense to me. I think he's so legit, but also I haven't played baby Groot shifting focus. You have yet, more sideline so. space too. That is ooh, that is also true. So I think things mm-hmm. that are shifting focus, baby Groot, Batman. With, yeah. like, less things fighting for the sideline, they could be definitely more legit, actually. And I could be way off on Detective, but that's a keyword I'm looking at just going, like, maybe. I also realized this earlier when I was team building, but her name is Misty Knight. Like, it's Misty, and it's nighttime. That's like, it's a Misty Knight. Oh. I literally never realized that until today. I was like, Misty Knight. While you were saying that, I was like, yeah, that's her name. Yeah, that's her, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's the point you But I was like... Here? I was like, why does it sound so weird? I'm like, oh my gosh. I was like, how have I never realized this is a bad pun by some Marvel writer back in <laughs> 19 whatever. And then I was like, who, who, what was her best friend's name? And I was like, Colleen Wing. Okay, no, I don't think Foggy there's anything Day. there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, Misty Knight, goodness gracious. Getting but, into the keywords that are 100% going to ball out. 100%. And we're, there's going to be a lot mine, of bold claims I think tonight. I assume we both have the same number one as far as like, Best keyword. I don't know if we do. Do we not? I think you... Three, two, one. Past. Mystical. Okay. Wow. Mystical still is like... Dang. Ridiculous, dude. Mystical? Kong. Kale. Okay. Man thing. Ghost Rider. I won't even lie. Even though it just won a world, I'm still not a Kale believer. Never been a Kale believer. I'm not going to lie, I bro. think she's even better post-rotation. Why am I doing it on... There we go. <laughs> oh, you're looking it up. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was sure. like, I was using realms. I'm like, why am I using realms? Constancy. I mean, There's so a lot of mystical on options. Here. I don't know. I guess I've never been a mystical player. King that's Deadpool never, and Elsa. That's never been my. Um, are they better mystical or monsters? Monster of legs or no? Monster kind of does hasn't quite had legs. For Black a while. lanterns. Black yeah, lanterns okay. are really good post rotation, but you're playing a them of, on a, a monster. A lot of monster theme. has mystical. A lot of mystical seven. Past monster. is very good. Past is probably I love past. Very well could be above mystical, but man, I think past is stupid, man. I think past, past is past so gives good. you access to Perdegaton. Yep, gives you offense or access to Flash Raptor. Perdegaton, Flash Raptor, Captain America, Madam Zan. Time Breaker is still Two very good. Kid. Yep, Time Breakers are all past. All the Dark Knights of Steel chases past. Uh, who can forget? Harley Nicole. Quinn is very, very <laughs> worth a shout out. You know, the new Battle Gnome has passed. Wow, I did not know that. Ooh. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Yeah, pass is definitely hilarious. up there. I think let's let's go through this. Let's go bit by bit. So yeah, well, yeah let's talk about past. Why past? I think I think it just has insanely strong support right now and insanely strong attackers. Like just to mm-hmm. boil it down to its most like simple, simple things, you get stuff like Captain America on the Pegasus. You get things like Two Gun Kid, Flash Raptor. Um, you have access to I guess Cap Wolf to an extent. As I'm just kind of scrolling through past here, but you have insane attackers, insanely strong attackers with past, and you also just get great support. Like we said, like Predagaton, Harley Quinn, Easy, Green Man, Harley Quinn. Yeah, all the Dark Knights of Steel, Harley Quinn, Green Man, Predagaton, Despero. I think is going to be played reverse way flash often. reverse flash caveman wally west also passed like Xanadu i think Prime, past just has Despero, dang, yeah. insane support and attackers yeah like i just i don't know past to me is just like so even the uncommon green lantern like that guy is legit he's cool 40 he points really cool. free broadsword construct carry eight tk enhancement i mean oh yeah i guess prob traded it's hard now, to ask for place. more okay yeah it's uh it's a really strong figure obviously so, the shifting batman I don't shifting know where Batman, people stand you on You do get him, the shifting Iron him. Man, too, for anybody that messes around with like any of the Sherlock stuff. I think Sherlock's a little slept on. Maybe he'll be used more. I don't, I I'd like, like him more if he's 10 points less. I would, I would agree, yeah. I mean, I could say that about anything. Uh, but most, probably most things he can say. I wish they were 10 points less. But he would just... I just think pass just just feel a little is better. such a well-rounded keyword. Just overall, well-rounded keyword. Great support, great mm-hmm. filler for points-wise with Timebreaker and a few other things, and just great attackers. Like Pass is just strong just overall. And yeah, I think with the amount of attackers in the game, shaping your team around support, again, with Scott gone, is going to probably be a lot of the directive for building, in which you can probably access attackers through any keyword, but if you're building specifically theme, it might be worth it to look into support before you start building that. And a good example of that you can see is in Animals, which is really, really nice because you can flex into Time Stealers 
using the Ultra Humanite 2x2. So now you have access to Animal, Time Stealers. The main Time Stealer that you want is Prodegaton, but it also gives you the option to throw on Supernova at 50, who does give you an insane advantage for going first. So if you want to build an Alpha cool. Bomb, that might be the way to do it. You also get access to Despero, too, who is, I think, very solid tech piece. He gets you a TK. He punishes your opponent's TK. Yes, he has 50 points, and that's his primary thing. But we're in an era where... I'm also really enjoying his shutting off like one sideline element when there's right now so few sideline elements. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're playing Shifting Batman. You no longer get play at home kit Batman. That's huge. You know, you're playing Cathan. Okay, no Cathan for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you play Beetlejuice when he comes out. You don't get Beetlejuice. Yeah, that's that's really honestly that might shove Despero (laughs) right into S tier. Yeah, that's crazy. Like stopping Beetlejuice. Holy smoke! So, but then just looking at animal side of things, like you have Deadpool and Hitmonkey. I like animal. Throw the trick arrows on them. They're insane. Chase Weapon X. Kong, Flash Rafter, Super Sore. It's not uh, Captain realize, America. I didn't realize Man Thing. Yeah, Man also, Thing. Also Captain America, Man Thing. These things that are on the past Cap teams Wolf. are also just, yeah, also animals. <laughs> kind of crazy. But where Animal lacks is outside of Perdegaton, There's it's kind of hard to get perplexed very on little, this team. Very little support. It's like Detective Chimp. Yeah? Is that it? What does Howard have? Oh, he's just like prob from something. Okay. Oh, Howard has Perplex. 30 point Perplex and Howard the Duck. He's five points less than Detective Chimp, at least. That's tough, man. Yeah. Support <laughs> support on some builds can be uh, a tough pill to swallow, which... Really hard. You know, oh really my gosh, hard. I'm sad. But wow, like, it feels good to have that. It feels it's so, so much, good. It's so much healthier to have to be like, wow, I've got to find this 30-point perplex. Like, even looking at past, there's, I think, two cheap perplexes. Oh, streaky, too. That's Madam Zanity to Prime is a perplex, and then, like, Mr. Immortal for 35 points is a perplex on past, which honestly could be a legit choice some you know cases some scenarios but i like it i like that it's like man i'm paying 35 whole points and all they have is perplex instead of i pay 35 points and they have a construct they have they perplex have they give me tk a leadership TK prob. prob they get to displace at the beginning of the turn <laughs> you oh, know? sorry sorry i guess you're thinking it's, you're yeah, merging some oh, things gosh. merging some i don't things. know what that was but yeah <laughs> Kind of came out but of yeah, so I don't know. I just like that supports have more cost nowadays. Hundred percent. Once again, but yeah, so no, animal is legit. I have not really looked into animal or time stealers as much as you have, but I do think that it's like a super legitimate team, it's, especially like once again, it generates a lot of thanks. To, thanks the masters of time, Crazy, <laughs> like, man. Yeah, masters I think masters of time is just setting the bar for so many of these keywords. Like, it has a ton of probability them. control. Dude, there's so much. Like this, this team I built as like almost everybody has prob on it, which is it's hilarious. Like, we're re-rolling. Okay? It's so funny, but it makes sense. <laughs> kind of time and time bending stuff. Being a master kind of, of it, prob. Yeah. yeah, yeah, obviously. You know, another keyword that I think was largely slept on going into worlds, and it performed pretty well, is assassin. Assassin. I knew you were gonna say assassin. There's not, not a lot of shake up there. I won't lie. I know we have probably listeners that love assassin. I've just never been the assassin guy. I've never built like. The target, be do. That she is interesting. She does make Green it, Man make it a little should do here. being added into the pool of existing assassins. You still have Talon Prime to shut some powers off. Again, Deadpool Hit Monkey, just an absurd piece. Like so yeah. much attack, so much damage potential. Kingpin Prime, who is so fun to play with. We're gonna get into him later. Uh when we get to <laughs> another segment of the show, we're gonna talk uh. about our boy. There is a lot. And then, you know, all the stuff from Notorious is still there. So like I really like Assassin, I think. And then Mern, too. Mern is a huge turn oh, yeah, key for them. Oh, yeah, Yep. So, like, Forgot about him. the thing with Assassin is that it does feel a bit lopsided, and if this team is on the back foot, it struggles. So if you're not making big hits early, it's tough. But you yeah. want to know what just made Assassin so much better? What's that, Ian? The rotation of Scott Porter. Because not every team has a pulse wave they can just instantly deploy. Mm. So you want to know who in turn gets better, Calder? Who's that? Do you really want to click it, our man, Dancing Peacemaker? Oh, they're true. Very so now true. the immunity can matter because they can't just pulse wave it out of existence. And if they do have pulse wave, you can position in a way to where it's like, okay, I'm still not going to let you pulse wave him. And if they go out of their way to do that, you probably have them in a favorable position to clap back. So Assassins, I think, has gained some defense like many teams have with Scott rotating. But this is a very specific thing. So that's a big reason why I think Assassin could find itself in, like, the top five. Because the damage yeah. output this team can have, shutting off defense powers on any character you want with Talon Prime, or playing Rage Prime, who's going to give you a plus one attack across the board. Hey, what's up, Scott Porter from the sideline? There's a lot of potential, and I really, really like it. So Assassin is one I'm looking at. 
Again, primarily looking to do non-theme this time around, but right. Assassin, I love. So, do nice. you have another keyword to visit? You know, I have a handful that I like kick around outside of like straight up past in a little bit i kind of do agree with you a little bit they're like mystical um i always look at soldier i really think soldier is like it already wasn't a keyword before rotation and i don't know if it ever becomes one post rotation but soldier's always been like a close to my heart favorite keyword that i just like to keep like tabs on and kind of look and see what we have as far as like soldier goes and i think casually soldiers in a great place i love what master of time did you know like I, i think that's like phenomenal and then also, I always just try to keep a lookout for, like, Avengers. I do think people are not utilizing the Gala as much as they could have. And I honestly really would like to see Gala Captain America. Well, with like support being inherently team. worth more now, yeah. like, both what it costs you and what it does for you, you know, it's more valuable in a sense of, like, there's less of it. So now yeah. I think Gala traits definitely are worth revisiting. I think that's a so, great point. I would like to see, because I think they have things like Wong, they have coming out of the TV She-Hulk, they obviously have Pegasus Captain America, you know. I think Avengers is a relatively strong keyword, but again, like, we just lost, like, A60 and Avengers yeah, forever. Spider-Man <laughs> Prime. You know, Spider-Man Prime, like, like a lot of really A60 good Avengers Spider-Man. stuff. But I do think there are some things that are worth revisiting. Still got two-gun kid. Very true. Very true. I mean, he is a problem. Like, Two Kings is, is really insane. I can't believe it took me so long to become big on him. I was like, oh my gosh, he is. And with so your good. buddy Scott gone, I mean, like twenty points for Prob is great, 20 and a twenty Prob point really full good. move attack everybody on your team yeah. is amazing. Thirteen square is it like seven and six, right? Thirteen yeah. square reach by himself, mm-hmm. pretty good, like solid. Really, really the entire solid. map one TK. Yeah, I really like Two Young Kid. I, I think he's great. So. Things like that, I'm always like looking at or looking into. I think scientists took an insane hit, losing Prime Spider-Man, losing Arachnite. I think scientists is just like a bare bones kind yeah. of nothing keyword. It looks like post rotation, which is so rare, dude. It's crazy because scientists have been so strong these past couple of mm-hmm. years, and now it's just like there's nothing. Like really, nothing like for over the last like ten years, I think scientists probably good for like seven or eight of them. Yeah. I'd, I'd agree with that. It's it's wild, but I agree. I was actually looking at scientists Potentially, going, maybe. as we did see like a few things in Black Panther, like Shuri and Black Panther, they're both scientists, so maybe we get more scientist love in sure. Black Panther. I do just think this Shuri and like her equipment is insane, and I can't wait to oh, see yeah. oh, what that yeah, turns just into. Yeah, juicing up your Prime Elsa, just equipping her yeah. like 30 times. <laughs> Plus that's, three damage? Dude, that's... Uh, yeah, oh my gosh, that sounds so fun. I don't know how that's going to work. Are you going to be able to equip people with multiple equipment is a unique thing. Hmm. But if you can have multiple know. equipment, is there a restriction there? Brian Galley, we know you're listening. Hello? Answer our question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am curious about that, We though. just get a message. How, how far are we into the show? 40-ish minutes. So 40 minutes after I upload the show, I just get a message. We get Brian. a message right hey, now. Hey, here you go. <laughs> I heard you guys were talking Eyes, smack. Ears everywhere. Another keyword that I think people are, I don't know, it doesn't feel like people are like super like into it, but I do think it's really strong. It's it's a little back and forth. I've heard mixed opinions on it. But again, going on the theme of like support being more valuable, Kevin, the Ultra Chase, mm. equipped with Tarette. So now you have an eight square see through anything. Outwit. outwit, yeah. You can re-roll on your turn or their turn. And again, that's any roll. And then you can click him to whatever you need, leadership, perplex, prop, what have you. That seems fantastic. And he's got the celebrity keyword, which Kong does, which Harley Quinn does, who people have purported as the new porter. <laughs> she does have a lot of stat buffs. Wong, you have Jokester again. You have Madison. Oh, yeah. You have crazy amounts of support and celebrity. So if you're looking to build with Kong, the route is crazy to say, but it might be celebrity. Hmm. That's so, kind of funny. What's weird about Celebrity, I think, is that you do have Titania who can keep that keyword in check so hard. So if it does become I'm so like a... worried. I'm always so worried about Titania. Ian. Well, like, if it were to become, like, more of a staple, Titania literally says, like, screw your special powers. I guess. I'm not saying it's like, oh, yeah, you know, obviously I'm playing Titania. I'm just saying if it got to a point where Celebrity was as good as people are saying it might be... Okay. That's, that's a little wild. It could, it could be something that comes out. So, yeah. I'm clicking through here. Cosmic's got, like, nothing. Ruler is, like, an odd amount of things are in Ruler, but... I mean, Starro is is very legit. And, yeah, I think once it comes down to, like, these big characters and, like, what limited keywords they have, I think this is where we just see non-theme kind of starts to take over. 
Yeah. I think things like Starro, anything that has like limited keywords, there's not much to build around, just instantly go non theme. But then you know, we look at like, good. we look at what theme teams are capable of dishing out damage wise on turn two, and that makes you start to wonder what does my non theme have to look like to make sure that I'm living through that? Yeah. And oh my gosh, again. I don't want to get into it quite yet because we'll we'll shift gears in the segments here in a moment. But there are some teams that if they go first, they will hurt you really bad. And they can theme pretty easily. I mean, Flash Raptor is going to open up so many alpha striking he gates. He's so insane. This guy is just... Oh, I, I, we've crazy. talked him into... I, I don't even know the word to say. Oblivion. Just oblivion, yeah. yeah. Flash Raptor is is just unreal. This figure, I really can't believe he exists. I will be very shocked if this is not something being looked at like immediately, because if Blackheart was a problem, then Flash Raptor is, believe it or not, a much bigger problem. <laughs> this guy's yeah. hand delivering whatever he wants across the map, and it's really it's easy nuts. to do. It's very so easy. easy to do. It's kind of crazy how easy it is. <laughs> And you can fix it with just, like, one word. So it's like, he's allowed to place friendly characters who have taken damage since your last turn. Yep. If you just add from opposing effects, it is now yeah, what the way, the power was exactly. intended to yeah, be. Yeah, saving somebody versus, oh, I trigger somebody with Despero or moving a train or whatever else. Yeah, Kathod, what have you. you know, and then Flash Raptor carries them 11 yeah, squares. Yeah, all sorts of crazy stuff, yeah. So fix, then, oh, fix that aspect of him. He's still insane. Because his defense modifier is not a unique modifier, so he can, if you play three, wow. plus three for everybody, which is, uh, believe it or not, pretty good. It is pretty good. And regardless of That's all of this, Calder, actually. what's awesome is, like, it, it's so cool, the figure's so cool, and the dial is so awesome that, like, I almost don't care. No, I don't hate it that much. <laughs> I don't hate like, it that much. It's a giant dinosaur, and he's so sick. Like, if you if Perdegaton looked like Flash Raptor, probably, probably wouldn't hate him. Definitely wouldn't hate him as much. <laughs> Not a fan a of bit. his his everything, I guess, <laughs> as a character. But yeah, yeah. Flash Driver's like, man, he's just so sick. How can you hate this guy? And it's just like one piece of even, Masters of Time. You know, man. even like Super Sword. I hate Superman. I hate that guy. But I'm like, all right. But kinda, when he's a dinosaur? When he's a big old dinosaur? That's hmm. kind of cool. Yeah, dang, dang, shoot. That's kind of neat. Yeah. Well, with a new set, with a new rotation, the field's wide open. It is. And in a way, as described, it feels a bit barren because you don't have anything to go off of. Especially, like, people, you know, there's no tournaments for a little bit here. We'll come up on state soon. But that, I believe, is going to be Silver Age. Silver, yeah. So, for Modern, it's going to be a bit of a question mark. And this is where things can get interesting. I love the Wild West. The post-world's yeah. Wild West of Modern. It's cool, I love man. it. So, what happens when you have that, Calder, is the market can shake up a bit. People have their ideas of what things might be, and some people, you know, are not looking at things right now that might be insane tomorrow. So, I would like to introduce a segment here that mm -hmm. we've done in the past, where I just give you my thoughts on the top three things you should buy now, the top three things you should wait on, and then some coin flip figures that I'm ultimately not sure on, but own both of. All right. <laughs> you need to get in the game! Are gonna go out of business and he's nuts! They're nuts! I always like to say there's a bull market somewhere. And I Mad money. Just you can't afford to miss. So my number one buy for Masters of Time as of right now, and it might shock people a little bit, it is a prime. And betting on prime value is a little difficult because you have to hedge them against every other prime in existence in that rotation. But my prime buy as of right now, this second, is Reverse Flash. On a good day, you can pick him up for about 30 bucks. Higher end, I'm seeing him go for like 45 so shooting in that window, that feels pretty good. I'm not going to make any promises on this. I don't know if I fully believe it myself, but I can see Reverse Flash following a similar price pattern to Prime Spider-Man. Probably not to the same ceiling, but I do okay. think when more sets come out, and you know, more Primes will come out too, so again, it's hard to predict this, it's hard to hedge against. Prime Flash is a sideline piece who costs nothing which is inherently valuable at the prime slot. If you're not playing a prime, there you go, now you are. But yeah. on a main force, with a Bucky's arm, this guy's 13 for 4, he's attacking twice. The more I look at him, I think it's got to be Bucky's arm, main force. The mm -hmm. more and more I look at him, I just think he's way too strong of an attacker. He's just it's, way too good. I want a main force. Then to just be like, I guess if you miss, I'll bring mm -hmm. it, which is still really good, but it's like, no, I don't want him to be on click 4. You, yeah, gross. I know, right? I want my 12 attack. I want, yeah, exactly. So, 
with everything he has, insane offense, making multiple attacks, ignoring characters, moving across the board, bashing. Oh, you based me? One or two? No, you didn't. Oh, you hit me? Shape change? Did you get to attack me? Super senses. Like, and then I can prob you too. The amount of stuff that this guy does is insane. I'm not going to say he's Prime Spider-Man. That is not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying right now is I think his price point is a good time to pick it up. So if you're looking to pick up things right now in Masters of Time, that'd probably be the number one figure I'd buy. Because he might stay at that same price. And if you did, well, you got him early. You got to play him more. And if he goes up, well, congratulations. Now you maybe have something that you're trading in the future. Maybe you're looking at selling. But ultimately, that figure's insane. Every Prime is so good in this set. But as of prices today, as of yeah. listening, this is the one to pick up. Okay. Number two, Shadu. You can pick one of these up for like eight to fifteen dollars. They're crazy cheap. And this is where I, you know, wanted to say, let's revisit old Prime Kingpin and going on teams that can do an absurd amount of damage on turn two. Let's revisit our buddy Mern, who says you can see through anything. You make an assassin theme with old Prime Kingpin and old Shadu and Shadu, maybe another Shadu, a weasel bystander, throw some enhancement in. I can triple attack you with my first Shadu from eight away really easily because I can bump up her range. I have plus one attack and damage from range combat expert. Yep. I have plus one attack and damage from Kingpin. I have an enhancement from a Weasel Pog. I am so easily a 13 for five from eight away, so I don't care about your Murn at all. I'm just blasting you. I'm blasting your Murn. So three attacks at five each, five, 10, 15. Second should do 20. Third should do 25. Oh, they also all have enhancement. Oh, that's so And then good. Kingpin, oh my who gosh. we struggled to deploy with Daredevil. It was hard to get him in position to take his power action to make it so they can attack again. From range in your starting area, it is so easy to do. So now I just hit you for 25 damage potentially, and now I'm attacking you two more times for 35 potential damage. Dang. So that's a triple should do Kingpin Prime. This figure is insane for 30 points. I, I know she dies incredibly easy, but oh my gosh, if she doesn't, if you go first, this figure is blasting you like so hard. So for 8 to $15... I don't think you can go wrong picking this up. Like, this figure yeah. is incredible value. Maybe it's not your play style, so, you know, maybe skip on it. But if you're looking at Assassin at all, seriously, insane. Also, you can give one of them trick arrows for free because they're marksmen. And my last of the top also three. True. Pretty insane. I think this figure is largely slept on, and I could be very wrong about this. <laughs> could be very wrong. <laughs> we got some sleepers. <laughs> Caveman Wally West. His stats are a bit low. Stats scare me, Ian. But we're still in an era where rollouts are going to dominate. Shutting off super senses within three. Incredible. Who's our big super senses we have to worry about? Now Mm. with Spider-Man gone. With Spider-Man gone, there is still Death Metal Wonder Woman who's giving all Mm. of your wild cards Wonder Woman team ability. Getting rid of Perdegaton is going Mm. to be so valuable, and he'll probably be copying that, so he's a four through six. There's a lot of Super Sense pieces. Flash Raptor. Good point. Yeah. Flash mm-hmm. Raptor. I guess the Bucky's motorcycle. Bucky's arm just gives it to you. Yeah. Motorcycle. Okay. You know what? Yeah, you're right. There's still a good amount of it. It's not as prevalent, but still, you cannot discount just shutting off a power within three. He's also a prob. Oh, He's absolutely. also a hyper time. And then again, we don't know what's coming. Being able to take any action as free. This is a good person to add to your repertoire. I think he could be something that could really be a turnkey for a lot of builds. And you can pick him up for about 15 bucks right now. So if you go with the entirety of my list, you're getting three figures I think that you can build a lot of alternate teams with for about, mm, I don't know, in the $60, $70 range. And for all super rares or primes, I'd say that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So yeah, those are my top three from Masters of Time where it's like, I think you buy today. And that's uh, also acting within reason. I know there's probably a handful of people who don't want to spend yeah, don't. like we do. <laughs> be savvy. Be savvy. Yeah. You know, look at look at those three and maybe be like, okay, but which one do I see myself playing the most? You mm-hmm. know, if you if you do decide to like go this route, like absolutely, still ultimately be like, well, what's in my play style? What is yeah. a figure that I also maybe believe in? You know, this is more. It's a good suggestion, mm-hmm. and I like it. If you are in like the chase market. I think Harley Quinn is another good one to pick I think she's up right just now. Such an easy like auto I've seen chase. Her people sell them for like fifty. I can't really. Yeah, it seems oh like a good gosh. price to me. That is a really no. That is good. I just I'm saying I can't believe she's that low. Yeah, because to me it's just it's like closer a, to like sixty to seventy. That on would, that feels better for me yeah. for Harley Quinn, just because she is just such an automatic like. Yeah, she's clearly the new best like really good support. Mm-hmm. You know, also just a wild card. For yeah, whatever reason she is the Bard. I suppose they fit into any part. The Bard, any party. yeah. Now. 
Calder, with so much excitement in what to buy, and there are other things to buy. You know, in the CUR, it's like buy a Perdegaton immediately if oh, you don't have one. I mean, abs- I mean, duh. Ch- simply trade your locals for an extra yeah. rare. Uh, that's honestly that's the route I would go. Like when it comes to buying rares and commons, on a, I guess you can, but like. If you're trade in an with area your buddies. Where you have yeah, to. trade with your buddies you know. or your locals that have maybe opened a bunch of product and probably have some extra rares. He is mm-hmm. a silver ring, so you only need one. So another like, this is not something to like. I think really like freak out about, but something where it's like to consider. Poseidon is pretty cheap right now, and he's a sideline effect. So another one thing of to the consider. Very few. Yeah, so maybe There's plenty of quake. Something there. Yeah. You know. Now top three weights. The number one is so obvious. Wait to pick up this figure 100% dark side. But Ian, he's so cool. He is cool, and I have and one. I need so I'm eight, telling and you. I need eight of them. <laughs> and I also need eight or six or whatever it is. Put put your faith in that the whole dark side vehicle shenanigans. If you're not informed on no, that. No, I need six right now. We're not going into it. Okay. We're not, we're not okay. going to go into this, but basically dark side can come out of a vehicle, and it gets dumb real quick. I think it'll be addressed. I, I think it has to be. No, I think the sky is falling. I should buy six right now. <laughs> I think I'm going to go buy six right now. Well, that exact mentality has pushed Darkseid's price well above the $100 mark. And is it really right now? Oh, my gosh. If you go gosh. on eBay, it's like, I saw one for bid. It was like $113. i am like, what is going on? <sighs> Ugh. You will be able to get your dark side. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Because the people who are probably locking up five or six, eventually they got to dump them. That's something that's going to come oh, down. Dump them. When new sets come out, people want new stuff. It's easier to get things. You know, you so can you can move the old it's older stuff. Order such. It is. Uh, the other one, another controversial one that <laughs> I'm not 100 percent on, but just due to how expensive he is right now, I just I cannot see this holding. Prime Swamp thing. Okay. There's no way that this figure is going to stay like 160 to 200 dollars. I get he's a fan favorite. I get he's also a fan favorite variant. He's an incredibly high rarity. I think it's all those things that push him up. It's so I and, I know, and yes, man. he is very solid gameplay wise. I know yes. personally he's not my gameplay style at all. And mm-hmm. you know I'm not as big on Swamp Thing as apparently every other comic book fan in the world is. But uh, to he's me, it, cool. is, it is insane that he is that much like is that high. It's it's a combination, you know. As it far is, as no, like he the is whole, a, again fan character, cool yeah. version. Like he's prime, high rarity, harder to get. Like all that's it all makes mm-hmm. sense why he's so expensive. But yeah, I wouldn't. He's a prime I though. That's the that's gun. the biggest pullback I think. Where it's like in the future again, new shiny things come out. I think people might be willing to dump their swamp things. If you remember the the price pattern of the Black Lanterns. Green Arrow used to be like $170. He was insanely expensive, yeah. People thought he was going to be the next like Carnage Silver Surfer. And I just want that on record. I was adamantly against that. That was no way. Batman has been the one that's really kind of stuck to his price level. And the rest of them, it's not like they're doing poorly, but they have pulled back. I think Swamp Thing will follow similar. I don't know what he'll fall to, but I just really do not see him staying where he's at. So okay, if you fair. are dying for a Black Lantern Prime Swamp thing and you're just like, man, I cannot justify this, I think it's an okay one to wait on. In similar fashion, another controversial pick here, Calder. Okay. The Prime Blue Beetle. Really? I don't I don't believe in him. I think he's really good. I don't think he is what people are saying he is. I think he's insanely good, and by I the way. I thought you deleted. <laughs> I thought you were a man who could delete. Wow. Well, he's insane, and you yeah. can build around him, and you can play him, and you'll probably do very well, but I don't think he's going to have the prime Spider-Man level of dominance that people are acting <laughs> No, there's like no way he's that level. There's too many good other primes. The field is too open. And right now, people are asking about 60+, plus, 70+. Plus. I think this is a prime that will probably fall in the range of 40 to 50, so if you do want to save some money on that one... I think this is one you can pick up later What's he for a better right deal. About 60 to $70. About 60 Okay. Yeah, I think around 40 bucks is seems right for Blue Beetle. Again, I could be completely wrong on that. People could find a way to just absolutely break him. But I look at him, and I'm just... I think he's very impressive. I want to state that this is a very good figure. And maybe it's just my own building that pushes me away from him. I don't think he's as good as people think he is. But he is still insanely, insanely good. Yeah. You know? Like... Okay. You're not LeBron James, you're Dwayne Wade. You're the you're the sidekick to LeBron James. And then lastly, the coin flips that I'm really just unsure about. Ultra Humanite. For whatever reason, his market is completely dried up. There has been none on eBay for like weeks at this point. I think the last one sold like September. Are you there? 
Mr. Humanite, are you there? We were the only people in the first wave of bricks at, at Nationals, uh, Nationals yeah, to, to pull an Ultra Humanite. That was pretty crazy. So there's that, too. I don't know if there's some weird scarcity with him. But uh, he is also incredibly valuable to animals, which I think is an insane keyword. So if you pick him up now, I don't know what you're paying for him. But he, if you want to play animals, I think you need to own that figure. I think I saw one around 70 80 bucks a week or two ago, like a round release. But now we're in a period of price setting because right. we have nothing to go off of other than two weeks ago. Right. So some guy could post one on Facebook tomorrow and say 150 And if it sells, people might then start dang, asking for that. Yeah. You know, It can happen like that. It's such few sales that influence the psychology of what people are willing to pay. I mean, I think a good example of that is, again, Black Lantern Green Arrow, where opening day, he's like 80 90 bucks. Typical for a chase. A couple weeks later, this guy's like, people are asking 200 bucks and getting it. So yeah. that could happen with Ultra Humanite. So buy at your discretion. Don't know about that one. And then lastly for this segment, Flash Raptor. Going for about 100 bucks right now. Insanely good. Absurdly good. Will he Wait, maintain $100? Okay. Will people play him in multiples and push it past $100? I don't know. Is he going to get a ratted? There's a lot of question marks around Flash Raptor. Again, absolutely insane figure. But where does he settle? Is it time to buy? Is it time to sell? I don't know. So, listeners, please, you can message me anytime about this stuff. What are you picking up today? What are you selling today? What's on your radar for tomorrow? Let me know. I'm curious. And then another figure that I think's value will like literally last the test of time. Like a decade from now, he might still be as expensive as he is today. We've seen it happen before. John Constantine. Oh, he's sure. probably going to be forty to yeah. fifty bucks, like forever. Yeah, honestly, he just again a fan favorite character that rarely ever gets made. I mean, it took someone winning worlds <laughs> to get John <laughs> Constantine made. So yeah, so that's a figure that if you want Constantine, pay the Piper because that Piper is going to be standing there for a while. No. That's everything I've got for that segment, though. Hopefully, you guys enjoy right it a bit. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions of the show. Guys, a lot of these are coming from our Patreon. So if you want to support everything we do, all of the videos, the live streams, you know, all the uh, stuff at Worlds, really, to an extent, the podcast, weekly stuff, you can go ahead and support us on Patreon. For as little as five bucks a month, you can join our Discord. We have an, we really do have such an amazing community over on Discord. we got some great standout members. There's always some fun discussion happening, either in general or team building, all sorts of cool stuff going on. So, And it also just gives you a great avenue to just chat with Ian and myself and the Dial H community. Like what I think is like a really core, core part of the Dial H community is our Discord. And you know, it's Patreon exclusive. And so, yeah, join for as little as five bucks a month. You also get yourself some tokens. Oh, hey, yeah. We also just got a ton of fun stuff from World. We did, yeah. We got a bunch of stuff to give giveaways. away. So it's a good time to join. So we're going to work on getting some more custom tokens. I know some Beetlejuice ones are in order. A lot of Master of Time stuff. I'm starting to bug our token guy about. We're going to get a few things made. And then hopefully. If we see some more Black Panther stuff, some more Black Panther ones, but at least like those weapons will probably be made mm -hmm. into tokens, which will be really fun. So we might have to do a little mini photo shoot day. And again, all of our tokens are very fun, kind of quirky, uh, little fun edits. So if you just want generic comic book art tokens printed on a poker chip. Well, who that's, wants that? Yeah, that's not going to be us. <laughs> it's not going to no. be here. We we do some very fun, like kind of cute token designs. If you've seen like our uh, Wolver Simeon tokens, the 6,000 Year Life tokens, and then the on your left, like me as all the different Captain America's tokens, it's like token sets are really fun, as well as just a handful of other really goofy versions of like bystanders. So we, we have a lot of fun with that, but that is all on our Patreon. And we have some questions. Really quick, I do want to shout out Wesley Robertson's event. He, in the questions, invites us to it. I personally don't know if I'll be able to go. That's actually my birthday weekend. Not a ton of people know it, but I'm born on Veterans Day, and I have a twin sister, so being able to just say, nope, sorry, I'm going to go to a tournament in Indiana probably won't fly with my family as that is like very entwined that we need to spend our birthdays together, which you should. So, but for those that are curious about Wesley Robertson's event, I want to say he's posted a few details here, which I'm going to find now. So his red, white and clicks event, the veterans day hero who's in, which again, awesome. I love, Hey, these are also very patriotic posters. Everybody knows I'm all about that stuff. I love that stuff. BRs every hour, 300 modern event, a team sealed event. He says, 
all of the proceeds are going to veterans. So it's like post roll rotation. He's got supercharged seals. They have team seals. They're doing daily raffles. He says he's got some discounted hotel prices at select locations. I don't know if we know which ones those are yet. All the proceeds also go to, again, to veterans, and that is really cool. So I, of course, support all kinds of stuff like that. I am all about just that nature, giving back to the community, helping veterans. I think that's awesome. I think it's a fun event. And just people organizing more and more events just needs to happen just in the world of Hero Clicks because these events are really fun. And with that, I should also shout out Ethan Jacobs' <laughs> event. Yeah, man. Believe it is October eighteenth through the twentieth. Yes, eighteenth uh, to the twentieth. He is going to have a three v three team format, which is really cool. He has a four hundred point. So one is going to be three hundred modern, four hundred points modern, and then three hundred point modern pulp for the team format. They're also going to do a three hundred point modern. It looks like that is going to be Sunday. So Sunday Saturday tournament. Yeah, nineteenth through the twentieth. This is going to be, I believe, in Des Moines, Iowa, which is actually really close to us. But sadly. Again, not able to attend this because big old We've weeaboo nerds. We, plans. we have different plans. And actually, I'm very excited for you guys yeah. to see these because they. Again, can't talk about that it's yet. It's hilarious. Either. Oh, that's just. It's going to be so funny. It's People so, are going to lose it so when they see stupid. this. That's. Yeah, but it's so funny, which is yeah. the best part about it. So Can't wait for that to be out. public. So, yeah, <laughs> October 19th to the 20th, Ethan Jacobs has a great tournament going on in Des Moines, Iowa. Again, more events here in what I consider to be the real Midwest, which I love. And then also the Indiana tournament, November 9th through the 10th. So just some really cool tournaments going on there. But to get into some more listener questions, we have... Tyler Murin asks, with us getting a Electra versus Daredevil duo figure, who would you guys like to see uh, on a Captain America or Batman versus duo oh, figure? Oh, dude, I have one instantly. So I instantly thought of it just being Captain America versus Batman, the classic shootout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just shooting each other, yeah. Um, but who do you think of a of Batman fighting dude, who? It would be so cool to see a Batman getting dragged by like a man bat. Ooh. Where he's like got him on the claws, and Batman's like maybe punching at him. I think that would <sighs> Dang, be that's cool. so sick. Like literally take the sculpt from like what is it, Joker's Wild, and throw a Batman under him. I mean that's just that's such also, an iconic sculpt. Dude, that man bat so sculpt tight. is so awesome. The flock of bats around, big old wings. Yeah, yeah he's insane. We did already get that the most so iconic cool. moment though in Bane breaking yeah, his back yeah. twice now. So. I mean, that, that'd be, like, the obvious number one choice, but I think Man Bat would be really cool. But what would be, like, a duo figure where they would actually be, like, a duo, you know? Where I thought like they want to fight together. it. Oh. Well, like, Electra and Daredevil are clearly, like, fighting in that sculpt, so I don't know if it'll be an Electra or a Daredevil, but I, I'd assume that's actually a duo figure. Oh, sure. You know what I mean? I think that's maybe the idea. Oh, yeah, okay. Don't get me wrong. There is one figure that, if it's not a duo, Captain America has pretty famously punched this person that will never, ever get printed in Hero Clicks ever, which would be cool, but yes, should never, ever, ever yeah. get made, oh, ever. Oh, my gosh, no. But, um, you know, <laughs> wow. I like seeing this person get punched, but... All right, that's so they're fighting, that. but they're working together. Yeah, okay. so that's more so. So, like, mm. I would say so. Fighting, but working together. I would like to see Captain America's basically version of like Daredevil Electro would be like Diamondback. Diamondback is very much Captain America's Black Cat, Catwoman, the the female love interest in his life, who's also like more a villain, but could maybe go to anti hero. Yeah. But also, I would always wanted to see Captain Diamondback as a duo figure. There's like that's my favorite. Like that'd be my OTP for all the young kids. Yeah, it's the one true pairing. Like that's my favorite, uh, I guess, love interest that Cap has ever had is Diamondbacks. So I would really like to see that as like a duo figure, a, sure. a fighting kind of clashing sculpt, uh, a Captain America and Iron Man where he's like, this is not really fighting so much, but like he's lasering the shield, you know, and you it's like, got ricocheting, but it's like, but like as a duo on one piece though, as one piece, as though, one piece enough, though, come enough. on. Um, or like, again, like Thor hitting Captain America's shield would also be cool. Like when Thor, like in the Avengers, and they, they are fighting in that one. And then there's like sh that shockwave, you mm -hmm. know, that'd be pretty cool. I don't know how often Batman really gets like into physical altercation with like the people he's working with. I'm trying to think of like good examples. I don't want Damien and Batman. They, they duke it out quite a bit. Batman versus Superman. I mean, sort of, that'd be kind of a cool one. Like yeah, him I suppose you gloves. could do you could do worlds fine, but again, that it feels like they're fighting. Yeah, it feels more they're fighting, not like working together. Electra and Daredevil are like we're trying to work together, but yeah. Whereas that's just like I'm gonna kill you, Superman. 
Yeah. So the vibe is different. I'm trying to match the the same energy the as vibes, Daredevil. Low key, they're off. They are. I would love to see off. a Punisher Deadpool one where they're like kind of stabbing each That'd other cool. or something. There's all like a power Punisher Daredevil as well where they fight and work together constantly. That'd be really fun. A Deadpool and Death one would be yeah. pretty cool. It would like I like the route they took with like Deadpool and Wolverine where they're like doing the the bro handshake, predator mm-hmm. handshake, but also them stabbing each other would have been a great sculpt too. Sure. Where it's yeah. like, you know, Wolverine stabbing Deadpool with claws. I know Katana. we did get Deadpool and Death too, but like yeah. the one you know, like if he, if he was largely being ignored by her, I guess would be the same That'd energy cool. as uh again like the Daredevil Electra. I don't fighting. know if Batman like I'm trying to think of a good one, but I think for the most part, the Batman duos I'd want to see would be like we're working together, and like that's yeah. that's the story of it. So Batman Guy Gardner duo figure, <laughs> they're on the same team. <laughs> you may be Captain America. <laughs> Stop! But you're Stop. no Guy Gardner. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Uh, They'll get it. Mm. Uh, Kyle asks, "Will you guys be holding auditions for Clicks commentators? I can provide you a resume, maybe." Maybe not. We'll see about commentary well, and everything. No, I'll, are... I'll give you a legitimate answer here. Okay. So, with commentary, we are very aware that this is something that you guys are requesting. It's something that we want to provide. And I think we kind of touched on this. It's something that requires expansion. And when you have expansion, you know, the budget needs to increase. Now we need more to like justify your time. So, it's hard... To enable this, it's hard to get people to just do this like out of the kindness of their heart. Because yeah. again, this is like it's a more serious a dedication than you think. I think uh, you know, I always appreciate when people come with ideas to the table for like, have you guys considered doing this or this? It's like, oh, absolutely. I think when you're on the other side of things, I, I mean, I can relate to it. But before I used to do this, there was plenty of stuff where it's like, oh, I wish people would you know do more of this or do more of that. And ultimately, there are so many things we want to do, but it's it's hard to justify. So I want to bring commentary to the game. We absolutely will. That is 100% in the plans for 2025. But looking at like the level of expansion it requires, I don't know how much of it we're going to do. And again, like this completely alters the physical setup for Dial H at every event because now we need like a booth to be in. Yeah, we need a place that isn't disturbing players. We and need we can mics still for them. Both, like, watch the we game need mics for us. It. Yeah, we need that to be routed correctly. You can do all this stuff, and I know other games do it, but just physically, like how we interact with people and what we're already doing during games, it's just difficult. It's it's more difficult really than you'd hard. think, and we would just need more people. So if it is something people are interested in, and you know maybe we can work out a way where it's like, oh, we can give you some hero clicks of some kind. I'm 100% opening to have like a cast of people help us out with that. 100%. It's just a matter of like figuring things out like again, like physically. Like you you look at like our hotel setup or sorry, the setup for Champion Clicks. Yeah. Where we're just like at the end of the super bare bones, yeah, just end of the room. You know, where are you putting us table. so we're not disturbing a finals match? <sighs> where just, they played no by the way by themselves because everyone else was at the charity auction. <laughs> yeah. Where am I sitting to do that? Am I in another room? Is do we have another room? At Worlds, where are they located? Are we just like off by ourselves, like behind a curtain? Yeah, I guess and then now the it's like banner. I'm having less fun because yeah. I'm isolated. In the I don't, booth. I don't get to be in this big atmosphere. I don't get to really watch this game in its truest sense. At Gen Con, now I no have to chance. Be squirreled away. Oh yeah, Gen Con's like no way. So such so little freedom at Gen Con. You have to think like the events where this is possible at, like it's it's just more difficult than you'd think. And if you really think about like the physical spacing for it, it's tough. And it's something that, yes, I really, really want to do. I think providing more information on a match of hero clicks, especially for newer players, is so important. But, man, it's uh, it's just tricky. So, yeah, 100% want to look into it. Uh, Kyle, 100% have you in mind. I'll reach out to you when that time comes. And we'll see. Maybe Champion Clicks is where we pilot it at this year. That's the first event of the year. We'll give it a try. Okay. Adepticon, we'll there's potential run. there. We'll test run action. Looking okay. at the booths people had set up at Adepticon, there's those potential were, there. Those were crazy cool, man. Adepticon had some awesome setups, like Marvel, mm-hmm. a Marvel Crisis Protocol and some like the Warhammer stuff was like oh, insane. Yeah. The multiple cameras and the rigs and everything. I was like, that. it's almost like cinematic. Like What they're doing is crazy So cool. if we can get dedicated space for it, yeah, I mean, I want to do this. It's just hard. Yeah. <laughs> Handful of questions here to end us off from Wesley. What is a way to narrow Silver Age so it's not quite as intimidating, 
but still competitive and fun. So Silver Age obviously has been out for almost 10 years now. 2016, mm-hmm. Spirit of Foes of Spider-Man is like the first set that has like a Silver Age set. Again, awesome set. I think the easiest way to narrow down Silver Age is to choose a figure that you just enjoy playing and you know you want to build around it like no matter what. So look through some sets, see what your play style is. You know, rotation just happened. Probably really the easiest way to is whatever just rotated, probably try to find things to build around what you already know that's like rotated as far as like getting into Silver Age. Look at their keywords, you know, go to HC units, make sure it's on Silver Age, HC Realms, whatever, it'll pull up everything. And just scroll through Silver Age around those characters' keywords and just kind of just take some time. It's a lot to, you know, pour over, pour through. Silver Age is a format It's that, so tough to build. Oh, it's insanely hard. And it, it does reward you for being a player for longer because mm-hmm. then you're more aware of what's come out in certain sets and what's still viable what's oh, yeah. not things like that like the average person doesn't know to go pull something from adw you know no. avengers defenders war like the average person doesn't go mm, is goblin king still something i should play <laughs> like yeah that's not like happening you know it's i'd say the number one thing so to be aware of like when you're building for silver age is like how do i deal with retail Colossal Retaliation is <laughs> And again, a modern big thing. players for the last two, three years don't know what Colossal Retail is. I mean, we have a few. They just, just don't get really played get really played. often, though. So, yeah, it's just not a thing that comes so, up as often. You know, like, really yeah. consider that. Like Top couple sets to look at, the Mighty Thor. Go look at the Mighty Thor if mm-hmm. you're interested in Silver Age. There's a lot of things. Unimind, consider visiting uh, the, the like loose idea of, like, don't die tech, as it's been called, where it's yeah. like, what figures are really hard to kill? How am I dealing with that? I think ultimately the way that you build, the way that you can go into building is understanding like what am I building against. It's obviously a lot more broad in Silver Age and there's going to be a ton of nasty things that can mess you up offensively. But understanding like mechanically what differs in Silver I think can make building easier. I also think dedicating to a theme will will really help Yeah, you. exactly. Yeah, finding a keyword. Yeah. Find a keyword 100%. I mean, there's just no way that... <laughs> If you're trying to build non-theme in silver, I wish you the best. It's like the intro to the Big Bang Theory. This, 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 this. <laughs> like that's basically what trying to build non-theme in silver is. Insane amount of options. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> a few fun ones. What does Captain Calder's costume for Halloween, or I assume you mean like what is my costume for Halloween? I don't know yet. Uh, last year it was Shaggy because I was working on Halloween and we did like a Scooby-Doo theme. Maybe this year I'll see if they're going to let us do costumes or I not have a costume work. idea for Halloween. I'm definitely going to have a... Yeah? Yeah, I can't say it though. Oh, okay. It involves no. you. Oh, that one? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that one, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, I could probably be... I mean, maybe. If yeah, there's maybe. like a party to if go there's to. there's something to go to and yeah, we're like both at like the same place, sure, like I'd be down for that. Or... If not, like, Ash is always a classic Halloween costume. I love cosplay and Ash, so, you know, he's always a classic costume. And then, yes, what would Captain America wear for Halloween? I think this is kind of, like, a cute one. I feel like Captain America would, like, reference some old-timey media, like Wizard of Oz. Like, he'd be, like, the straw man or something, like the scarecrow or whatever. I think I think that could be, like, a Captain America-esque costume where he's like, oh, I'll be something from my time, you know, or he'd be, like, a famous baseball player from the 1930s and 40s or something. I can yeah, see, like... dressed up as Babe Ruth. <laughs> Babe Ruth. Yeah, honestly, I can I guess see that being a thing, you know? Like, I think, like, Captain America would have, like, very old things that like, him as a kid would find fun. So it'd be, like, very old style, like, old school stuff like that. Sure. Yeah. But that is, that is it. That's it for listener questions. That's all we have. It was a really fun show, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We got a lot of fun, a lot of cool things coming up on the pipeline here. So stay tuned to Dial H for Hero Clicks on YouTube. Master Cut coming soon. You're not going to want to miss it. Really cool game. Again, two phenomenal players, Nicholas Madsen and then uh, Dylan Kassbaum, your 2024 Hero Clicks World Champion. So we got to see a really yeah. cool game. Stay tuned for that video. I'm Ian, really, really Ian excited how it's turning out. It looks cool. Just seeing the intros yeah. last I've seen, I'm like, that looks sick. It's This year, it has been a little bit more for me to work through. I'm not sure why. I think primarily because usually it's like I can get this done and shut down. But, you know, again, I already mentioned in the beginning of the episode, that has just not happened. So balancing this with that, it's taken a little longer. I'm sorry, guys. It'll be worth watching, though. And then it's also something I think that serves as a relic for it's where it's like, oh, you want to see what high-end hero clicks looks like? you know, the top level play, but also understand it to a good degree. I think building a library of these is a, a good tool to have, even if it's, you know, these aren't modern anymore, but hey, 
here's what some pieces can do. And here's, you know, how more intricate interactions play out. So that's the primary reason I do it is I think it's just a good piece of media to have for HeroClix history. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It'll be fun. Make sure to check it out. But guys, for all your HeroClix needs from boxings, videos, podcasts, everything and more, make sure you dial H and like always, happy trails. Yeah, he's on your left. Yeah, he's on There's your a cap. Left. There's a cap. A Captain America. Yeah, he's on your left. Yeah, he's on There's your left. There's a shield. Left. There's a shield. And it's on your left. Yeah, he's on your left. Yeah, he's on your when left. When he's on your left, he's on your left. He's Captain America on your left.